Boker Tov, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the special edition of Kabbalah Cafe, Erev Shabbat Kodesh, Parashat Vayigash. I want to thank Gershom and Rachel for sponsoring today's Kabbalah Cafe in memory of Edna Sheklo. Her yard site was the first of Tevet this week. It should only be Bissarot Tovot and the good news in your family and in our community and all of Klal Yisrael. Amen. At the funeral of Baron Rothschild, many people attended. And amongst those that came to pay their last um, their, their last respect was an individual who not many people knew, but he was crying literally like a, like a baby, crying. And after the, the, after the funeral, someone went over to him and said, excuse me, sir, are you from Mr. Rothschild's family? And he says, he continues to cry and sobbing. He says, no, no, that's exactly why I'm crying, that I'm not from Mr. Rothschild's family. One of the interesting episodes of this week's Parsha is where Yosef and Binyamin, they cry on each other's shoulders. It's a very emotional episode. And it's not just all the feelings that came pouring out. But there is something much deeper, which is over here, which <clears throat> is the reason for their crying. The Talmud says, which this is what Rashi quotes, that Yosef cried on Binyamin's shoulders for the two Batei Mikdash, the two temples that will be destroyed that are in the portion of Binyamin. Yerushalayim, at least part of Yerushalayim, is in the portion of Binyamin. And Binyamin cried on the shoulders of Yosef for the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh which was built and would be destroyed, and it was in the portion of Yosef. As we know that every tribe received their own part of Eretz Yisrael. The question that we're going to discuss today is, what is the significance of the neck? Usually, we talk about the shoulders. You cry on someone's shoulders. Usually you cry on someone's shoulders and that is somewhat comforting and that is somewhat comforting for the person when you cry and When you cry on someone's shoulders, then it's somewhat comforting for the individual. But why does the Torah say that he cried on his neck? <coughs> also, that point is very specific. There's a reason for it. And we can learn something very special and meaningful from the fact that each one of them, Yosef and Benjamin, cried on each other's necks, specifically. So the Medrash teaches us that the Beit HaMikdash is compared to the neck of a person. Please mute your microphones, so this way we'll be able to follow quietly. I tried to mute it from here. One second, please. Please give me a moment. Okay, so far so good. So it says that the Beit HaMikdash is compared to the neck. Because just like the neck is up there, in the, it's on top of the body. In other words, starting from the shoulders, that's where the main part of the body is. And the neck is right on top of that. 
so too the Beit HaMikdash is in the height of the world, right here in Yerushalayim. We have the great Zchut to be here, and Yerushalayim is on top of the world, and the base and the base of Mikdash is also up there. But the the Gemara obviously says that the neck is not the highest. So why don't you compare the Beit Hamikdash to the mind or to the head? Why to the neck? It's even a higher. The head is even higher than the neck. And so the Gemara explains. That it's not exactly the highest place in the world. It's almost like it's almost higher. It's almost in the highest place. It's only twenty-three. A month less than the highest point. Than the highest point, and apparently, it's. There to be a drop lower than the highest place. But the real question is why? Why? Why compare not to the mind? Isn't the mind at a higher level? The moach, the the seichel, the intellect of an individual, is perhaps the highest part. Is wouldn't that be? A greater compliment for the Beit Hamikdash, if we called it more of a meaningful part of the body, not just the neck, which happens to connect two parts: the head and the body, the main part of the body. Maybe even the heart. It would be better than the neck. In order to understand this, we have to understand what is so important of the neck. Why is the, why does the neck take up such an important part of the, of the body? Now, if you look at the person's mind, scientists say that scientists say that the mind is only about one point three kilograms weight, which is only about two percent of the weight of a person. And on the other hand, it needs to have 20% of the oxygen from the entire body. It also needs 20% of blood. So it needs to have a tremendous amount of energy, totally disproportionate to its weight and its size. The reason is because the mind plays a central role in the function of the body. In other words, the mind plays a double role. Number one, it, it thinks. It's intellectual. It gives the person an ability to, to be greater than any other species of the world. It, it has, the, it has the, the, the ability to think. But perhaps moreover, what does the mind do? The mind, the, the seichel, the brains are the organism, they run the organism, organism of the entire body. Uh, it is, yeah. please close your microphones so that we'll be able to listen without disturbance. One second, please. Okay, thank you for holding. For example, when a person's foot hurts, why does it hurt the person? Why does a person feel pain? Because the, the, that which hurt the person sent a message to the brain, and the brain sent a message that it should hurt. Now, what is the bridge? Here's the point of everything. What is the bridge between the mind, the brains, and the rest of the body? That is the neck. In other words, you can have something really holy, really special, really elite, which in this case is the, is the brains. But nevertheless, 
if there's no connection between the mind and the body, then it's not going to be able to function properly. You're not going to be able to truly appreciate the greatness of the mind, the greatness of the brain. It's like there's a guy who invested in Bitcoin all the way in the beginning. In other words, he should be quite rich if he was to sell all of his stocks in Bitcoin. But there's one little problem. He forgot the code to his Bitcoin account. So pretty much all of the worth, there's no way for him to recover this code. And unfortunately, there's no way for him to claim his riches. That's like the neck. The neck is the bridge, the key that enables one to appreciate and to to connect to the great gifts that Hashem has given a person through the person's head, mind, brains, eyes, ears, and all the other gifts that Hashem has, has given us. And this is exactly what the Beit HaMikdash is. Right? We talk, we talk about Yosef cried on Benjamin's neck, which that was for the destruction of the Yosef cried on Benjamin's neck for the destruction, destruction of the Tuba Te Mikdash. And Binyamin cried on Yosef's neck for the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh. It's not just that they were emotionally, their, their, all their feelings came out pouring from the depths of their hearts. Finally, they can embrace. But there was a message over here. The message was that we're crying for the Beit HaMikdash. The Beit HaMikdash is compared to the neck. Because what's the neck? The neck is something which connects the greatest part of the body to the rest of the body. The Beit HaMikdash connects the greatest level of Kedusha, which was in the, the Kodesh HaKadashim, the Holy of Holies, the Aron HaKodesh, and connected it to the rest of the world. The Beit HaMikdash connected the highest point in the Harabai in the Temple Mount, to the rest of the world. That's exactly why the menorah in the Beit HaMikdash, Hashem does not need to have a candelabra in order to have light. There was plenty of light, physical and spiritual, in the Beit HaMikdash. The point was, the Beit HaMikdash was to bring the Kedush of, of the holiest level to the rest of the world. That's why we learned on Chanukah that the windows of the Beit HaMikdash were unlike any other windows in the old city. If you go now to the old city of Yerushalayim, you'll see walls that are very, very thick, perhaps a meter or even two. But the way they designed it was that the outside was narrow, the inside was wide, so that the light would spread to the rest of the room. Because after all, obviously, there was no electricity in a regular, in a regular home in those days. But by the Beit HaMikdash, it was the opposite. It was wide in the inside. I'm sorry. It was narrow on the inside and wide on the outside. It's like the joke, the guy, he, he, uh, he put on his, his heater a uh, full blast in the middle of the winter, and his door is open. So someone walked by and said, what are you doing? Are you heating up Rechavia? Are you heating up Yerushalayim? What's the point of having light, having a window, when it's, when it's narrow inside and, and wide outside. What, are you lighting up the world? The answer is yes. That's exactly the point of the Beit HaMikdash, to bring the light and the Kedusha from inside, outside. That's why it's compared to the neck. So true, you can compare the Beit HaMikdash to the head, to the heart, and to other major organs in a person's body. But if you want to talk about the main tafkid, the main function of the Beit HaMikdash, of bridging between the highest level of Kedusha and to the rest of the world, then the best way to compare that is to the neck. And this is why, this is the deeper reason, why Yosef and Binyamin 
cried on each other's necks. And this is exactly why when Hashem asked us to bring contributions to the Mishkan, the Asuli Mikdash, He said, you should make for me a sanctuary, the Shachanti Bitocham, and I will rest in them. It doesn't say in, in him, in it. It says in them. Because in addition to the fact that Hashem real, uh, practically is in the Beit HaMikdash and now in the place of the Beit HaMikdash, moreover, Hashem rests within every single person. We are a walking Beit HaMikdash. So especially our necks are so special because they, it represents, in a sense, a major part of our existence, of our, of our body connecting our minds and brains and head to the rest of the body. Now what happened when the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? Which that was the reason for Yosef and Benjamin to cry. What does the Medrash tell us? That when there's no Beit HaMikdash, God forbid, then the exact quote, let me give you the, um, God forbid, it's as if there is no life to Am Yisrael. What does that mean? It should only be for the enemies of Am Yisrael. So someone looking from an external point of view could think, oh, there's only... Uh, When the Beit HaMikdash was standing, it was only wood and stones. And when it was destroyed, only wood and stones were destroyed. It's not a big deal. Of course, that's ludicrous to say. Because there's no question that it's not just stones and, and wood. Rather, this is a holy place. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he destroyed, unfortunately, the Beit HaMikdash. But Hashem destroyed the Beit HaMikdash, it says in the Chazal, because um, some people viewed the building to be like only stones and, and wood. But once we zoom in and we try to figure out, we try to put a focus on what the main mission, the main purpose, the main, the main purpose of the Beit HaMikdash was and is, then we realize that we can, that it's not just stones and, and wood, but it's something which brings and connects the entire world to, to the holiest uh, Kedusha ever. And this is why the Medr says that the Beis HaMikdash is con compared to the entire world and to the, the, the world, the, the, the human being. Human being is called Olam Katan, a small world. Every person is a small Beit HaMikdash. Now, when we look at ourselves, we look at each other, we're not looking at ourselves as just a human being, just flesh and blood and bones. Just like, just like um, with Beit HaMikdash, we cannot look at it as being just wood and stones, so too a human being. We can't look at uh, another person as just being... Um, flesh and, and blood and, and bones. Rather, a neshama, a walking Beit HaMikdash. Like the Alter Rebbe explains, that what is the idea of the mind? The mind is very great. One of the chidushim, one of the innovations of the Alter Rebbe is that the mind has a power to control the heart, has a power to control all, all of our desires. We can control ourselves not to do anything which is not allowed. Only by mind power. Obviously, we have to work on it. We have to develop our mind. We have to we have to train our mind to think the way Hashem wants it to think. But once we've gotten our mind to 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 help con control the way we the way we live, how do you actually get the mind to control? You have to have something in the middle. You have to have some kind of bridge, a connector. And that connector is a very plays a very important role. Just yesterday, I picked up a laptop computer from the lab. And why did it take a, an extra several days? Because the wire, the connect, the 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 plug, the, 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 it was missing the piece which can go right into the 
into the uh, laptop. And so this bridge, this little thing is, is, if you don't have it, you can have the, the best laptop, you can have a, 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 a high quality adapter. But if you don't have the connection, then it's, then it's not going to work. So that's why the, 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 the neck plays such an important role. Sometimes people tell over something special that made them change their life, whether to become a Baal Shuva or to uh, convert or to do something really special, to do something, a major project. And they'll explain why did they make this change? What brought them to do it? Something in their mind. They sat down and they had a, an idea and it was a, and see so if you can convince yourself that it's the, it's, it's the right thing and use your neck but it should remain only in the mind but if it's something which should affect you on a deep level then you know that it's something which is going to have a, a very uh, permanent effect. The chief rabbi of Antwerp, uh, a Chabad rabbi, a very special man, he's very old, Baruch Hashem. His name is Harav Moshe David Lieberman. He has children, grandchildren, I think great grand, uh, maybe even great great grandchildren. He's way into his 90s and he's very active, Baruch Hashem. Hashem should continue to give him long and healthy years. Amen. So he told over the story that he once brought a rich and a Jew to, who was around 70 years old to Yechidu to have a private audience with the Rebbe. And when he came out, this man came out of, of the Yechidus, he was shining, his face was shining. And he said excitingly, I was born from, from, from a new, even though he was very, uh, he, he, uh, even though he was a bit elderly. And He said that, and he said as follows, he felt that the Rebbe's view at the entire world changed the way he looked at the world. In other words, you can have the same mind, the same neck, and the same heart. But once it clicks, as they say in Hebrew, nafala simon, a simon is the old coin that they used to make uh, phone calls with the uh, public phones over here um, in the streets many, many ages ago. So it took time till that little coin fell, and when it clicked, that's when the phone was able to be made. So when you realize, you make that switch of mind, then hopefully that can that the, the new the new vision, the new uh, approach to life should hopefully make a, a great uh, a great impact on a person's life. This is why. The, the, the verse states in the, in the Navi, in the Prophets, that these are, the Torah is like a pearl for your head and large, huge, giant for your neck. What does that mean? Where does a necklace go? You guess right, on the neck. Why does it go on the neck? It seems like, you know, uh, it's, it's the best place to hang. It's a narrow area. You, you put the necklace on and, and it hangs and it's, it's beautiful. But according to what we just learned, it's not just technical. The fact that the Torah is compared to a necklace which hangs from the neck indicates that, there, that the neck plays a major role. And that's exactly what we just talked about. The whole idea of the neck is in order to bring to bridge from the higher part, the more elite part of one's body, to the lower part of one's body. The same thing as we learn Torah. What do you think the Torah is for? You think the Torah is for yourself? The Torah is there in order to bring it to the world. That's why that we learn the Torah. Not just that we should be able to pat ourselves on the back and to say, wow, I've just learned another, another thing. I've become a greater genius. We learn Torah in order to teach the Torah to someone else. 
if you know an Aleph, teach an Aleph, the Rebbe used to say. If you know a Bet, teach him. You know some Mishnah, teach a Mishnah. You know some Tanya, teach Tanya. Because the, the Torah is beautiful, correct? The Torah is like a necklace. It's a gem, it's precious. But where does it hang from? It hangs from the neck, which teaches us that the neck is, a, is that the learning the Torah should be like a neck. We should be able to connect the highest things that we learn, every bit of every word of Torah, with those people that we come in contact with. I just want to finish off this beautiful Dvar Torah with one with one point that the fact that Yosef cried on Binyamin's shoulders and Binyamin cried on Yosef's shoulders was in order to indicate that why didn't they just cry for themselves? Why did they cry on the other one's shoulders for the other one's um, sorrow, for the other one's, for the destruction in the other one's portion? Binyamin should have cried for the two Beit HaMikdash, two devils in his own portion, Yerushalayim. And Yosef should have cried for his own portion for the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh in Shiloh, which was in Yosef's portion. The answer is, the Rebbe says a fascinating concept. For your own problems, there's no time to cry. You got to work. You got to change the world. If Hashem presents in front of you a, a challenge, there's no time to cry. There's no time to, 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 to whine and to have sorrow. You got you to work. You got to plow away and change the situation. Make it better. Because if Hashem gave it to you and I, to whoever it is, it means that we are there in the right place at the right time to make a difference. For the other person to try to, to sympathize and cry with them and listen to them, try to help, of course. But the focus is to be there for them. For yourself, there's no time to cry. For If, if a challenge presents itself in, in front of someone, for, for yourself, there's no, no time to cry. You got to work and you got to change the world, change your part of the world, and your part of the world will ultimately change the entire world. Thank you very much for joining us. Mincha Bezrat Hashem at 4 o'clock tonight, this, evening, this afternoon. Um, tomorrow morning, Chassidut at 9 o'clock, 9.30 is davening. And looking forward to seeing you, Bezrat Hashem, uh, here at Chabad of Rechavi as often as possible. Beit Midrash next week. And of course, uh, at 9.15, we're starting again this coming week, uh, daily Chassidut online right here on Zoom. Toda Thank you very much and have a wonderful Shabbat.